Hi everybody. So uh, just to remind you, my name is Robert Coble. I'm a professor here at Corning Community College. Uh, so I'm here to introduce this lab, lab number five, uh, the vertebrates. So up until this point, all we have seen uh, are animals that lack a, um, a vertebral column. Uh, they don't have any of the characteristics that the chordates have. And the chordates have four characteristics. Uh, they're right here. Notochord, pharyngeal slits, post-anal tail, and a nerve cord. Um, so the focus of today's lab, of course, again, are the vertebrates, the chordates. So the first thing that you'll have to do is to take a look at this is Amphioxus. Amphioxus is a very old, ancient, primitive chordate, but it has all four of the uh, characteristics that chordates have. So, you know, label these four characteristics, the nerve cord, notochord, post-anal tail, and pharyngeal slits. Uh, what resources do you have to do this? Well, you have the Rust book, that is that optional book. You have any of the internet sources that you can find, uh, as well as your OER textbook. Uh, so use those sources. But the real meat of today's lab is this, to look at the different groups of uh, vertebrata and the different groups of phylum chordata. So I'll briefly go through them, um, and then we'll explain the rest of the lab. And the first group are these jawless fish. So as you can tell by the term jawless, they lack jaws. Uh, they don't have that ability to bite down on things. Um, the example of these are hagfishes and lampreys. Uh, the next major group and the major advancement are jaws. So this is class chondrichthians. Um, examples of class chondrichthians would be things like sharks, rays, skates, um, and they have a major advantage in that they can now bite things. And this is huge! Uh, if you can bite things, you can tear flesh off. You can also defend yourself much better by, you know, biting your predators. The next group are bony fish. And these include things like ray-finned and lobe-finned fishes. Basically, any fish that has a backbone made of uh, bone. These guys, the sharks and rays that we just saw, they have a backbone made of cartilage. Um, just as an aside, the term chondro means cartilage. So bony fish like trout, salmon, perch, tilapia, uh, any of those types of fish uh, that have bones as their background are the bony fish. The next major advancement are legs. So these are amphibians and tetrapods. Uh, amphibians and tetrapods, tetra means four, so they have four legs. Uh, what these were able to do uh, was is that they're able to put pressure on these legs, which allowed them to move onto land. You know, now that you have a very solid, solidly built bone structure with legs, you can now move on land. Unfortunately for amphibians, uh, they're still tied to water. They reproduce in water, um, and their skin is very moist. It requires a lot of moisture and water, or otherwise they'll dry out and they'll die. Some examples of class amphibia, um, frogs, salamanders, mud puppies. The next group are reptiles. So the major, major, major things that reptiles have uh, there's two. There is a skin made of keratin, and they have an amniotic or an amnion. So for the keratin, uh, this is a hydrophobic, so it's a waterproof protein that is found in their skin. Uh, we actually have keratin in our skins, uh, fingernails, um, hair is made up of keratin. Uh, and this prevents these animals from drying out. So now they could be out of water, they could be, you know, primarily on land, and reptiles can live in crazy environments like the desert, so that they don't dry out. The second thing they have is an amnion, which is part of an egg. So these are egg-laying creatures. 
um, humans and birds and reptiles all have an amniotic egg or amniotic fluid. The next group are class aves. These are birds. These are flying reptiles, basically. Uh, they have feathers to fly. And finally, you have mammals. And class mammalia is what we are a part of. Um, there are some structures that are very unique to mammalia. Things like hair and milk. So all mammals have hair and produce milk. The other thing to think about with this structure of the phylum chordata is that uh, the characteristic that is brand new in chondrichthians, you see in the rest of them. So for example, the first thing you see in chondrichthians, the major advancement that you see in chondrichthians uh, are jaws. So they have the ability to bite. Uh, so do bony fish amphibians and tetrapods, reptiles, birds, and mammals all have jaws. The first thing you see in bony fish are bones, and so do amphibians and reptiles, birds, and mammals all have bones. The first thing you see in amphibians and tetrapods are four limbs, uh, so do reptiles, birds, and mammals. The first thing you see in reptiles are keratin and amnions, so do birds and mammals, and then mammals are unique because they have hair and milk. So to help reinforce this information, uh, what we are asking you to do is to take a look at these organisms and simply write in the group that they are a part of. So for example, this one is a skate, this is a ray, you know, you can think of like, if you like baseball, the Tampa Bay, Tampa Bay Rays. Uh, they are jawed, boneless fish, class chondrithians. I know this because I use my OER textbook. I also use internet resources, uh, plus my previous knowledge um, to answer these questions. So you're going to do that for all of these organisms. You're then going to copy and paste these pictures into the correct group on a PowerPoint slide document that we will provide you. So it looks like this. So if you identify a hagfish or lamprey, you would put the hagfish or lamprey in this slide. If you identify a chondrithian, you would put that picture into this slide and save this slide and send it to your professor to make sure that everything is proper. Once you are done with that, we will then get into a dichotomous key. Uh, and so in order to make a dichotomous key, uh, a dichotomous, you know, you have to understand what it is. A dichotomous key is a way to identify, in a stepwise fashion, uh, a specific organism. So we give you an example here um, with different objects, like a pine tree, a clam, rock, robin, tin can, deer, oak tree, mouse, dandelion, paramecium, bicycle, and ant. So we'll just pick one and we'll go through this dichotomous key. Let's say that we want to find out a clam. So think of a clam, right? It's a bivalve. Is it living or non-living? And because a clam is a living organism, you go to number four. So here's number four. The organism is microscopic or the organism is macroscopic? Well, for a clam, do you need to look at it under a microscope? No, you can see it with your eye. So it is macroscopic, so we're gonna go to five. Is the organism a plant or an animal? And we know from this class that the clam is an animal. So we're going to go to number eight. Organism lives on land or in water? And the answer is that the organism lives in water. And boom, we see a clam. So the idea is for you to create a dichotomous key using those vertebrates and the chordates that you saw in lab. And we'll get you started. So most people like to start off with uh, organism does not have jaws. That would be hagfish and lamprey. 
Uh, the second would be organism has a jaw. And you would say, go to group two. So then here's group two. And then you would then delineate or break up the rest of the organisms. So the way I like to think about it is, what do the chondrithians have that the rest of the organisms don't have? Or what are the rest of the, what is the characteristic that the rest of the organisms have that chondrithians don't? So if we go up here, what is something that all of these have that the chondrithians don't? So I might do something like organism does not have bone. Chondrithians. Organism has a backbone made of bone. go to group three and then you would go to group three and continue on and so the idea is that on our dichotomous key we want to have every single group represented like we have hagfishes and lampreys we have chondrithians so you also want to have uh the bony fish the amphibians reptiles birds and mammals all represented in this dichotomous key and that's the end of the lab. So if you have problems with this or if you have questions, always contact your lab instructor. Uh, we're more than happy to help. Uh, but by the end of this lab, you should be able to know the different groups of chordates, their features. Uh, you should be able to make and interpret a dichotomous key. And that's it. So if you have any more questions, let me know. Um, let your instructors know. Uh, otherwise. Have fun.